And you wanna know why? And you wanna know how? And you wanna know why? And you wanna know now? Painted, there you are, and not before time, too. Ah, uh, yes, well, you see, there was this man in the shop. Did you get the sticky tape? Sticky tape? Yes, we've run out. Um, um, um yes. Coming along quite nicely, don't you think? Yes, Vortex. <laughs> now, this man in the shop. Planked him, will you just blow this up, okay? Yes, sorry, Vortex. That's a good boy. It's just that I thought you might have wanted me to have listen in upstairs. Upstairs? To whom? To this man I was telling you about in the shop. What man? Asking for directions to Infinity Limited. What? A prospective client? Well, why didn't you speak up before? Did he tell you what it was all about? Okay. I'm, not, I'm not sure. Yeah? But I think it seemed to have something to do with balloons. Balloons? Yeah. Balloons. What did he sound like? Well, he was a bit like it. Ah, Infinity Limited. Mr. Hill. Yes. Come in. Thank you. I'm sorry to be late. I, uh, I had to ask for directions. Yes, well, it can be a little tricky. Oh. <laughs> anyway, this is Crystal. Uh, Arthur Hill, how do you do? Hello. And I'm Rick. Ah, oh, yes, I think I spoke to you on the telephone. That's right, yeah. Yes. Uh, Would you care for a seat, Mr. Hill? Uh, Arthur, uh, uh, thank you. This is very interesting. <laughs> and perhaps tell us how we can help you? Well, you mentioned something about retiring. I did. And a uh, uh, newspaper race? Indeed. Perhaps it would be better if I started from the beginning. Mm. Well, 47 years ago, I started work at the Government Bureau of Statistics as a junior clerk. In three weeks' time, I'm due to leave as a senior clerk on full pension. Yes, yes. Well, I've enjoyed my work at the Bureau, keeping figures on everything from births and deaths to the average life of a biro, which incidentally is 3.4 weeks. Oh, we always seem to lose ours. Exactly. Well, I always promised myself that when I retired, I'd do something rather adventurous. Adventurous? Well, I'm not married and haven't any responsibilities as such. So, uh, when I saw this in yesterday's newspaper... Balloon race? Yes. From Melbourne to Aubrey? Exactly. I thought to myself, well, why not? Oh, it certainly is adventurous. Oh, do you think so? Do you know a lot about balloons? No, not an awful lot. Like anything at all? No. It's adventurous. Most. Oh, well, that's why I came to Infinity Limited, oh, you see. Oh, well, we don't do it. Well, not to fly in it. Oh. oh, no, no. I'd have to do that. No. No, to help me design it. Oh, design it. Yes, design it, build it, work out the route, safety features. Be my team manager, I think it's called. I see. Could be fun. Yeah, could be expensive, too. Well, have you thought about the cost? Yes, I have considered that. And within reason, I think I can afford it. Plus your expenses, of course. Yes. <laughs> well? Well, what do you say? Have we a, a deal? I'm game if you are. I'm game? It's a deal. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm most, most grateful. See? Uh, yes, black with 1.25 sugars, please. Ten thousand dollars. Details, page six. Page six. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars. First prize for the first man flight to arrive in Albury. No engine power allowed. Judge's decision final. Now that is a pity. We could have made good use of the old motor mower there. Even so, Vortex, a balloon race. Yeah, yes, you've done very, very well, Plankton. Very good. Very well, good. Well, what do you think? Make him a better offer. Who? The client. <laughs> that sentimental old fool. Score him from infinity. Not likely, Plankton. I... No. Plankton. What? I have a much better idea. What? We enter the race ourselves. Yeah. The Vortex Ventures team. Yes. Flying the revolutionary... Vortenberg. What 
Wartenberg. I haven't had time to build it yet. Give me a chance, will right, you? Right, right. Not only are you celebrating Vortex Ventures' first birthday in grand style, but also winning the entire $10,000 prize money for ourselves. And not just half. Precisely. Yeah, good, <laughs> it's not bad, is it? <laughs> now, the only problem remaining is what makes a balloon go up and not down. Albury lies approximately 260 kilometres northeast of Melbourne. As the crow flies. Yeah, and if that crow happens to be in a balloon with a 20 kilometre per hour tailwind. From the southwest. Mm. Correct. It'll take about 13 hours. Uh, to reach Albury. That's mm. with perfect winds. Well, anything faster and you could end up in Canberra. But that'd still qualify you under the rules. It would. Mm. And how does one get these winds? Well, according to the Met Bureau, we need an approaching anti cyclone. Well, that'd give you southerly winds like this. Anti cyclone? Yes, a high pressure system. Well, with a retreating one, you ha could have northerly winds like that. And end up in Tasmania. I've never been to Tasmania. That's providing you even stop in time. Yeah, see, a balloon's not like a yacht. You can't tack or steer. All you can really do is go up and go down. And go where the wind takes you. Pretty much. I think I might get to like this. Mm. <laughs> that brings us to our first problem. What sort of balloon? Oh. So what I've done is arranged a meeting with a guy who actually makes them. A balloon maker? Yeah, for tomorrow morning. And he should be able to give us some advice on them. Whatever you think. <laughs> because at the moment, we're not even sure why they stay up there. <laughs> <laughs> no. And on that farm, he had a guppy. Yeah, yeah. Why does the air rise? It was supposed to. Helps the fish breathe. Yeah, but, but why does it rise? Why doesn't it just fly around in the bottom? I don't know, because it's in bubbles, I suppose. Oh, balloons are bubbles, sort of, and they don't rise. Balloons have got skins. Anyway, they're not in the water. Of course they're not in... in water. Excuse me, fish. Hey, hey, Plankton, did you see that? Look, it rises. Yeah. Now, what does that tell us? That we should launch our balloons from underwater. No, 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 it tells us that balloons rise in water, but not in the air. Now, water is heavier than air. Balloons are heavier than air, but they're lighter than water. So, so it follows that for a balloon to rise in the air, it also has to be lighter. Plankton. What? That's it. What? The balloon must be lighter than air. That's impossible. What's lighter than air? Oh, well, you've got... You've got... I don't know. <laughs> What do I? Plankton. What? Do that again. Do what? Blow a bubble. Oh, you mean a big one? Yeah, and blow it over the heater. Use your lungs, Plankton. Oh, look, it's rising. Exactly. Because it is caught in a draft of hot air. And hot air rises. Right. <laughs> so there we have something that is lighter than air. Other air that's that's warmer. Yes, you mean fill the balloon with warm air. <laughs> yeah, precisely, Blake. But what happens when we get into the air? How do you keep the air in the balloon warm? Uh. Oh. All right, just let up gently. Fine. You know, if you're thinking of gas, you're looking at an envelope. That's the skin that holds the gas of up to 12 metres in diameter. Well, why so large? Well, you need the lift. Remember, in this basket, you might be carrying up to 60 12-kilo sandbags. The ballast? Yeah, right. Plus, say, three passengers at about 70 kilos apiece, plus 300-odd kilos of envelope and equipment. That's well over 1,200 kilos. Yeah, right. So you end up with this envelope that could contain this place easily. Well, that's not small. No, it's also a lot of gas, particularly with today's prices. Oh, about how much? Oh, for helium, about $28,000 worth. Hey, eh? And for hydrogen? Oh, less than $4,000. Oh, that's not so bad. No. What's the difference? Well, helium can't catch fire, hydrogen can. That's why you have to worry about static with hydrogen. Uh, electricity? Yeah, particularly on warm, dry days. I see. But how far are you going, anyway? 
Oh, about 240 kilometres. I'll oh, say so about 12 hours or so. Yeah, with luck. Well, there's another alternative. Hot air. Hot air? Hot air rises. Does it? <laughs> Hopefully. Of course, that's the reason for the burner in the photo. Right. Right, look, why don't you pop back here after lunch and I'll try and arrange a little outside demonstration for you. Great. Good, yes. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Awful. I can't get the air warm, let alone keep them warm. Oh, besides, they keep bursting all the time. Oh, never mind. It was worth a try. Where have you been? Oh, I happened to drop in by the carnival down the road. And voila! Ha! Our tickets are 10,000 bucks. Hey! <laughs> They're giving them out to kiddies, and so I happened to uh, borrow one. What's in it? <laughs> oh, some sort of gas or something. I don't know. Uh, but of course, Plankton, I would have thought of it eventually. Of course. Lighter than air, Plankton. Lighter than air. You give me enough of these balloons and I'll fly it to Alaska, let alone Albury. Well, <laughs> don't you think one big balloon would be better? But just leave the brain work to me, Plankton. You just worry about how you're going to spend your share of the 10,000 bucks. Now, how are you going to look in short trousers? <laughs> short trousers? <laughs> The fuel is stored here as a liquid. For LPG? Yes, then it's forced up these tubes through pressure, vaporised... By the heat of the flame. Correct. And burns here, like so. And that heats the air inside the balloon. Well, that's just the pilot light, but yes, this whole thing is slung above the basket directly below the envelope. I see. It's quite safe. Oh, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> and how would I control it? Oh, from down here. Bursts every few minutes should keep you up easily. Yes, it, it will. Yes. Look, I'll show you. The beauty of the hot air ones, apart from the cheapness, is their manoeuvrability. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can go up and down that much easier. Oh, is that why you don't need sandbags in a hot air balloon? That's right. Mind you, you have to carry quite a bit of fuel for the distance you're going, but other than that, I'd say it'd be just the job. Yeah. Come fly with me. I'm glad that's the last one. Yes? Yes. <laughs> I think he was beginning to suspect something. All in the cause of science, my boy. All in the cause of science. Well, there, Plankton, what do you think? Well... I still think one big balloon would have been better. Ah, oh, look, why do I bother? Why? What, what happens if you get a puncture with one big balloon? Look, you sink. Yeah, well, lots of little balloons you don't. And what happens if a rope breaks on one big balloon? You uh, snag. Well, you don't with lots of little balloons. And what happens if you get snagged in a tree? You don't you capsize. Well, with little balloons you don't because you just <laughs> cut them off. Now, I do the thinking. Yes. No need for me to go on? No. Good. Now, there is just one more detail we have to sort out. Like what? Like, where's the race starting from? Oh. Compass. A compass. Altimeter and rate of climb meter. Altimeter and rate of climb meter. Flares. Uh, flares. Matches, gloves, crash helmet. Matches, gloves, crash helmet. Fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. Whistle and knife. A whistle and knife. Life jacket. Life jacket. And finally, beacon and two-way radio. Ah, right. And remember, we'll be in constant radio communication back here at headquarters. Excellent. Oh, and this. Champagne? <laughs> of course, to have after your victory speech. Ah, oh, yes. Now, the Met Bureau says that the wind should be perfect sometime in the next 18 hours. South by southwest. That's right. And Max is waiting on hourly standby, ready to deliver the balloon direct to the launch site. But well, where exactly is that? Ah, now, that took some finding, picking an open, clear area. But we hit on a spot just about there. Now, you're sure this is where they sit? Yes, uh, I, I think so. And we're the first here. Uh -oh. <laughs> Excellent. Arthur, are you with us? Arthur, we can like 
everything safe to go. Come on. Sandbags. Sandbag. Compass. Compass. Lift module. Lift what? Balloons. Lift. What? Gondola. Bloody old, eh? Gondola. Oh, gondola. Gondola. Fish plankton. <laughs> <laughs> Voila! The luxury two-seat Vortenberg airship balloon that will take us heavenward to fame, fortune, Vortex. luxury. Hadn't we better hurry up a bit? Oh, there's nobody else here yet, Plankton. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> Binoculars. Binoculars. Lunch. Lunch. Hey, what have we got? Okay, Arthur, okay. have you got everything? Yes. Play. Oh, yes, make yes, sure yes. you keep in radio contact. Hands off! Oh, 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 you look lovely. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget your picnic basket. <laughs> oh, yes. And don't forget the champagne. Hands off! Hands off! And don't forget the champagne! Of course! Watch out, pretty friend! Aubrey, here we come! Keep in touch on the radio, Arthur! Yes! Goodbye! <laughs> Cast off forward! Cast off! Cast off aft! Have you cast off yet? Yes. Oh, you try another sandbag. Twelve hours, twenty-seven minutes. He must be nearly there, surely. Yeah, he's been up for a while. Hello, he's... Infinity Limited. How do you hear me? Loud and clear, Arthur. Are you all right? Yes, I'm over a football field. I think Burner's off. Where? Whereabouts? Oh, I can't see. There's some people. I'm coming down quickly. And there's a banner or something. Gosh, the ground's coming up very fast. I can just make it out. Aubrey welcomes first balloonist. Oh. Oh, I've learned it. Aubrey, I, I've done it. We've <laughs> done it. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's he's done it.